All right, hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome to the live stream. So today, we are going to be doing a data science project, working our way through it. Let me get a mic so that you guys can better hear me, especially since I'm not using my nice camera. For some reason, my nice camera just doesn't, uh, in this lighting, it just doesn't get good, uh, like, a good profile of myself. Okay. There we go. Put it like that. All right. Let me start taking a look at what we have over here. Welcome, everyone. It is a Friday evening here in the United States. Where I am, we're going to be doing a data science project. I was about to say quick, but I don't know if it'll be quick. All right, so let's start from the top over here. So do I have a personal laptop? Um, I do. I use the Asus M16, mostly because I wanted to, wanted to do some light gaming on the side. Uh, but if that was not the case, then I would have definitely picked a MacBook Air or a, maybe a MacBook Pro. I, I, I might have gotten a MacBook Pro, but... Um, yeah, the MacBook Air is definitely more than enough, and I would have gotten that for sure. All right, Luke Steinman, I've become unmotivated on getting back into SQL and Tableau. Do you have any suggestions? Um, so when you say suggestions, I'm guessing you mean like suggestions to stay motivated, continue on with uh, learning the skills and everything. I find that you usually have to find either there are one of two things that motivate people, right? Either external motivation, um, internal motivation, I guess that could be a second thing, or what I call like a positive feedback loop, right? So external motivations are things like, I need a job, I need to make money. It's these like things that don't really have to do with you as a person, um, you know, to an extent. I would say like maybe uh, if you're earning zero dollars, then that could be like internally motivating to be like, okay, I want to earn at least something. But um those motivation factors I find are good for short-term motivation, but they fizzle out quite quickly. Like, for example, I, I've lost interest in um, upgrading my skills just to make more money uh, recently, and so I need to find better motivation to do stuff. Um, internal motivation are things like you want to better yourself. You just want to become like better at these skills. You, you want to always improve. Um, and I think that you can usually set those up by setting up a, a positive feedback loop. So for example, with um, uh, myself, I set the positive feedback loop with these videos. So I create these videos and people seem to like them. They like um, – people learn stuff from them and that makes means that I have to constantly be learning myself. So that's like a positive feedback loop associated with the video. So I think that basically you're going to have to find some way to create that positive feedback loop. What Joshua K says over here about joining a community of some kind, like a um, Discord community or something, is a great way to go about it. Um, a really good example of a positive feedback loop is the um, the people around me, you know, like in, in that I like talk to regularly, are uh, generally have like good educations, good jobs. They, they make a solid amount of money, and they're getting promoted quite rapidly. Um, and so there's a positive feedback loop of like friendly competition, I'd say to, you know, always stay, you know, up and at them with everyone else. So I would say that's, that's one kind of a positive feedback loop. Uh, do I have a discord community? I do, uh, but it's for Patreon members and YouTube, uh, memberships, um, only because I don't want to get into moderating a large discord community. So I find that, you know, when people pay for stuff, they're usually pretty well behaved, um, but uh, yeah, that's the only reason I don't uh, open it up fully because I don't want to get into the whole moderation game. Oh, uh, let's see. Undergrad, nice. Discord community is also great. I hate when during the interview process, data engineers are asked to solve data structure and algorithm questions. What is your view on that? So it looks like we have quite a couple of questions over here. So I'm going to, yeah, okay, so now we're getting a bunch of questions, right? So uh, I apologize, guys. This stream is not specifically for questions. What we're actually going to be doing in this stream is we're going to be doing a data science project. So, you know, toss in a question here or there, um, but uh, I would say that it is uh, better to, um, what would you call it? Um, we're we're going to be focusing on the, the, the project today. 
Would you prefer us to join YouTube or Patreon? Uh, Patreon's easy for me to manage. I just have the YouTube thing because some people, for some reason, don't want to put money into Patreon. They want to put money into the YouTube memberships. I would say I personally prefer Patreon. It's easier for me to contact or communicate with people that way. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, what are we doing today? So everyone, as you're joining in, feel free to tell me where you're from. I'm always curious to see where uh, people in our uh, live streams are from. We always get a very interesting set of uh, people over here. All right, let's go back here. All right, so today's video is sponsored by Project Pro. Um, these guys reached out and they have a really cool, pro uh, a really cool product. Um, I didn't know that this was much of a thing. But basically what they do is that they will take end-to-end -end data science projects and solve them, like real projects inside, um, what do you call them, real projects inside uh, like companies and stuff like Walmart uh, and other large companies. And they'll solve it end-to-end -end and then put that in their service. And they have a bunch of, they have a couple of free projects as well. I find that it's a great way to learn skills that I'm trying to pick up because you know you can study the skills, you can watch my videos and everything, and watch it like you know obviously watch my videos. Learning the skills is a great way to get started, but then you have to be able to apply it somewhere. So Project Pro's uh, product over here seems really cool, and we're going to be going through one of their projects over here because um, I, I mean I just thought it would be useful. I mean I'm interested in uh, seeing this project anyways, and I'm like you know what let's have a uh, evening cop I mean a code and um, a code and chill session. So we're going to be trying to build a natural language processing um, or processor to parse out resume data using uh, Spacy. I don't know how to say that. Spacy is it? Would you call it Spacy? I guess you can call it Spacy, like Kevin Spacy. Um, I don't use. I've done NLP pro problems before, but I've never used Spacy. I've only used um, what would you call it? TensorFlow. I've only used TensorFlow. So Spacy will be a new one. All right, DFW, nice. Yeah, I'm from Dallas as well. Another YouTuber threw me into mod for their Discord. I can help you if you want, but not full time. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll consider it honestly. If the community gets big enough, I could see myself doing it. Um, I, I just never really had much of an interest in like starting up in Discord and like, man, because even like the mods have to be like managed and stuff. So, um, San Antonio, Texas, cool, cool. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm Dallas, Texas. I'm in Seattle right now, but I'm from Dallas, Texas. Denver, Colorado, cool. I was in Denver a couple of weeks ago. Beautiful city. Uh, one of my favorite cities. It's like it's like a really really big town, which is what I really like about it. Um, so yeah, okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So let me know if you guys have any questions about Project Pro. Um, we're just going to be going through their project over here. You can I, did I, I I put a link in the description below. Yeah, I put a link in the description below that you can check out their website, sign up for an account. Uh, it helps me when you guys sign up for stuff that like uh, are is being promoted on my channel. So you know that's always helpful. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so imagine working as an intern in a company's HR department, and you've been provided with a massive uh, pile of about a thousand resumes. Your task is to prepare, prepare a list of candidates suitable for software engineer roles. Now, since this company didn't provide the, oh, hey, well, uh, welcome, I agree, welcome, welcome. Uh, now, since this company didn't provide the candidates with a um, uh, resume format, it is your job to analyze. And let me zoom in for you guys. I just realized this is probably kind of small. There we go. Maybe one more? Yeah. It is your job to analyze each resume manually. Uh, how tiring, right? Well, there's an easy way out. Building a resume parsing application that takes uh, resumes as an input and extracts and analyzes all the valuable information uh, from it. Um, this makes sense. This is exactly what all companies use currently. Um, basically, no company looks at, uh, what do you call it, like uh, the um, active, no, no company like, looks at resumes like one after another. They send them through an ATS known as an application tracking system or applicant tracking system and uh, usually go doing it that way. Uh, companies have a tough time scanning thousands of qualified resumes. They either need many people to do this or they miss out on qualified candidates, spending too much on labor hours, segregating candidates' uh, resume manually is a waste of the company's time, money, and productivity. We, we thus suggest you work on this resume parsing project that you can automate the segregation task and save companies a lot of time. So resume parsing in Python pro, uh, in Python resume parsing in Python project objective. Maybe they should add a comma over there. This project uses Python uh, uses Python's library Spacy to uh, implement various NLP techniques like tokenization, lemmatization, parts of speech tagging uh, for building a resume parser in Python. And considering all of the resumes are submitted in PDF format, you will learn how to implement optical character. Ooh, that's cool. I don't, I've never built an OCR bot, uh, basically a robot that can like, or a bot that can like, 
um, detect uh, characters um, from an image. The resulting application will require a minimum human intervention to extract crucial information from the resume, such as applicant's work, experience, name, geographic information, etc. It is one of the most exciting NLP projects for beginners, so make sure you attempt it. Cool, cool. Uh, all right, so let's see what everyone else is saying. I am from Virginia. I'm a YouTuber too. Are you the recorded life? What is your um, YouTube about and a data engineer? Oklahoma City. Cool. I was, uh, yeah, I used to live in Oklahoma City. So close. You're invited when I open the pool soon. Nice, nice. Uh, Sri Lanka, Brazil, Houston. Teradata, love or hate relationship. Yeah, wait, where did that come? Did I mention Teradata? Um, did I mention Teradata? Huh. Uh, what does an entry level data analyst do? Um, oh, one second. Give me one second, guys. All right. We want to move to the outskirts in four to five years after the boys graduate high school. Nice. At JCL. Did I miss something? Huh, I'm gonna miss something. You didn't, I just wanna know. <laughs> uh, Teradata, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it's all right. I, I, there are other tools I use that, that I like a lot better, quite honestly. Um, namely Google Cloud. For my, some of my consulting gigs, I use Google Cloud, it's amazing. All right, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to build an NLP bot. And there's some, okay, so here's some basic uh, components of the, what would you call it? The, um, of NLP that, that you guys need to know about, right? So you have tokenization, lemmatization, parts of speech tagging, and stop words elimination. So I'll go over each of those in a second. Hey, hey, G-A-W-D, God, I guess. Uh, love the previous video. Thank you so much. Uh, so Spidey Ninja, this isn't a uh, Q&A session, so I'm not answering questions in this. Like, feel free to put it in there. If it's um, a relevant question, then I might answer it, but uh, this isn't my normal Q&A session, so I, I'm not to end, because because the, the problem is when I start answering questions, then this the entire live stream turns into a Q&A session. Uh, so it's important that I stay focused, otherwise we won't get to the actual thing where we're trying to, um, you know, do a, do a data science project over here. I was in Seattle last week for the first time. Definitely be uh, going back. I stayed in the Lake Union area. Oh, nice. I mean, Lake Union's like right over there. Um, oh, okay. I mean, if anyone ever comes to Seattle, feel free to message me. I'll, you know, I, I love to hit people up as they come over here. We had another subscriber. She came to Seattle uh, a couple of weeks ago. And so, um, yeah, I met up with her. Super cool person. So, yeah, uh, if you're ever in Seattle, feel free to hit me up. Uh, Instagram is usually how you can get uh, get me to. Thank you so much, Duxt. Um yeah, I was a little bit nervous about putting that out there, but I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. Um, because I used uh, an Eminem song, I uh, that entire video got like demonetized, and all the revenue for that video goes straight to uh, Eminem. So, yeah, Lake Union is the hub. Yeah. All right. So there's a couple of things that are important to know about NLP, right? So what is NLP? It's natural language processing, basically meaning that. How can you program a uh, computer to understand what uh, like natural human text, right? That's already been translated for you. And a lot of that has to do with just understanding basic grammar and stuff. And that's where things like tokenization, lemmatization, and parts of speech tagging go. So like tokenization is um, splitting textual data into different pieces. And you can split it up usually by words or characters. So usually you'll split it up by words, right? Because individual characters don't mean all that much. Maybe you could get something by tokenizing uh, individual individual characters to see the um, uppercase versus lowercase um, letters. But um, it's usually the first step performed in any NLP project. That's uh, yeah, that's accurate. Um, I walked out of my hotel and the Space Needle was like right in front of me. Oh, okay, so you are like you were like right next to me. I can see the Space Needle from my, so not my apartment, but I have some friends that who their apartment faces the Space Needle and it's like right there, you know? So yeah, you were probably really, really close to me then. Uh, let's see. It is usually the first step in an NLP project. Da, 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 da. Okay, tokenization helps further steps of an NLP pipeline involves evaluating the weights of all words depending on their significance in the corpus. And if you guys want to follow along, feel free to sign up for Project Pro linked in the description below. So the larger goal of this resume parsing Python application is to decode the semantics of the text. For that is to form 
the form of the verb that is used does not have a significant impact. Therefore, lemmatization is used to convert all forms. Ah, okay. So yeah, lemmatization basically, uh, so in English, right? Uh, like in many other languages, you conjugate your verbs, right? So I, um, I, I go, I am going, I went. These are all the same, like these are different um, uh, conjugations of the same verb, right? So what lemmatization does is it removes all, all of the uh, extra stuff and just turns everything back to its default format. And by doing that, um, you're getting rid of tense, which is usually not that important for stuff, especially for a resume uh, bot. So lemmatization is another great technique. And basically what we're doing is we, we uh, like any data science project, like 80% of your time is just gonna be spent cleaning up your data. And so we're doing that in order to actually um, better process it, you know? Sweet, a Python interview question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead and do one of those. I, I'm, I'm glad you guys liked it. Um, I hope the SQL, like I explained the SQL questions well in my last video. So hopefully that was uh, easy enough for people to follow. All right, so if you consider the word apple, it can have two meanings in a sentence, depending on whether it has been used as a proper noun or a common noun. You will understand whether one is discussing the multinational tech company or the fruit. The CV parser Python project will understand how parts of speech tagging is implemented in Python. Okay, cool, cool. So lots of, we're going over a lot of grammar and stuff. Stop words are interesting. Yeah, you definitely want to get rid of those. So they're basically words that don't really communicate any meaning uh, in the context of a natural language processing bot. Now, obviously, I think if you were building like a, um, like a bot that understood people's commands and stuff like that, then you wouldn't want to lemmatize everything. You wouldn't want to uh, get rid of stop words because that stuff could be very important. But for a resume parser, it definitely isn't important. So we're going to get rid of words like that. So Spacey is a library in Python that's widely used in many NLP-based projects by data scientists as it offers quick implementation of techniques mentioned above. Additionally, one can use Spacey to visualize different entities in uh, text data through its built-in visualizer called Displacey. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's pretty cool. I've never, no, I've never used Spacey before. I didn't know that it had like a, like a visualization component as well. Further, Spacey supports the implementation of rule-based matching, um, sh shallow parsing, dependency parsing, etc. This NLP resume parser project will guide you on using Spacey for named entity recognition, which is NER. So that's something I've not heard of. So that's new. So OCR using uh, Tika. You will use Apache Tika, an open source library for implementing OCR in this project, since for optical character recognition. It involves converting images into text. Okay, cool. Machine learning pipeline. So we're not really worried about that quite yet. Uh, and then we're not worried about scaling it right now. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and downloaded the code. So let me go over here. I guess let me open it in Visual Studio Code. And then let's split this screen in such a way that, there we go. All right, cool. So Oh, this, okay, the PDF won't view properly over here. Let's look at it like this. So here's someone's resume, for example. So someone named Alice Clark lives in Delhi, India. <laughs> that, uh, yep, that makes sense. Uh, okay. Re resume two. Hey, Classy Mil uh, Molassi, go ahead and try, um, I have a data analyst roadmap video that you can check out. Yeah, it, it is, uh, and uh, Joshua, okay, sorry, yeah, I, I, would, I would say it is as well. I think that their target audience is actually like organizations more than like regular people. Um, so maybe that's kind of what, what the, the angle is. You go to your company and say, hey, if we want to learn how to like implement this stuff, they have a project for that over here. And then you get your company to expense it. So that might be the angle they're, they're taking at with it. Um, but I can, I can see the expense too because I, I personally am not aware of another website that just has project after project with like videos on how to do everything. So I think – let me show you guys how that works. Like over here, you have like videos on every – section of the project. So you can just like follow them along as they do it, which I found very interesting. So, but we will try and figure this out ourselves right now. 
Okay, so these are, it says this is the output, but I would actually guess that this is the input. Okay, so interesting. Okay, so here's our input. So they already broke it down into JSON files for us, which is awesome. It makes our lives a lot easier. So for anyone not aware, a JSON file, excuse me. Ooh, that's a Friday evening. A JSON file is just another way to store data. But, uh, just to, It's another way to store data. And so that's what we're doing over here. We're just storing data in another format. Um, these, everything is, every new section is separated by these uh, curly braces over here. Um, and then you have a key and then your values. Thank you so much. Classy molassy. All right. Okay, cool. So we have some good information over there in our input. Let's see what else we have in this data set. Input, output, source. So I'm guessing this is where, yeah, this is where all of our code is. So let's go ahead and open this and ML pipeline. Okay, so I'm guessing engine is what, okay, yeah, engine is what we actually are going to be using. Yeah, so JSON, is, the, the thing that makes JSON really cool is that you can nest a lot of values inside each other. And we, so I work at Nordstrom, right? Um, we use JSONs whenever we want to pass information between different Python files or different like um, pieces of software because it's more, it's easier to read and information won't accidentally be changed. Like anyone that's ever used CSVs with Excel knows that Excel likes to change all the information in your CSV. So, you know. I used NER back when I was an intern. Cool, cool. So maybe you'll be able to help me out over here. Okay, interesting. So I am going to go through this code line by line and learn what they, try and figure out what they do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it inside a Python notebook um, just because I like working in Python notebooks more. Uh, let's see, we'll call it NLP resume, uh, parser.ipynb. Do that, do that. All right. So I was gonna say import pandas as PD because I literally always do that. Let us see what our requirements.txt is. I don't see it here, but I guess I could just go to the individual. Yeah, I could just go to the individual. Let's see, utils.standard spacey. SK learn, spacey. Okay, so I think spacey and TIKA are the only ones I don't have, right? So I'm not exactly sure what TIKA is. Uh, oh, one second, guys. All right, so huh, not really sure what that is. Okay, but let's go ahead and create a new environment for this. So we'll go ahead and open up Anaconda prompt because we are on Windows. Uh, and I, can I just, oh cool, that kind of works. Hello, Nick SSR. Let us zoom in on this a little bit. That way you guys can see it better. Let's see, conda list env. I haven't used a terminal in a while or made an environment in a while. There we go. Uh, let's see. So it looks like we have base, minimal DS, profit, streamlet, web scraping. So let's go ahead and uh, conda env create. Uh, what was the syntax for that again? Conda create env. And let's see, 
let us Sorry, one second guys. Looks like I have to change the link in the video. All right. All right. Conda create environment. Let's see, how do we do that again? Uh, con yeah, Conda cheat sheet. This is what I usually use because I'm not creating environments on a regular basis. Uh, conda create, uh, cool. So conda create name. Conda create, let's see, and what was it? Is it name and then let's name it um, NLP. And then let's figure out how we can download Spacey while we're at it. Let's see, I want to download it on Conda for Mac OS. I, oh wait, sorry, no, I have uh, Windows. I have a GPU. Oh, I don't know which version of CUDA I have. Okay, let's just say I have a CPU. I don't think I need anything that uh, advanced anyways. And then English. So Conda install C, Conda Ford, Spacey. Hey, we of course, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much, Joshua. All right. Yep. And then let's go ahead and conda activate. Oh, we want to activate the new environment, NLP. And then what was the code that they gave us? Conda install C conda forge. Spacey. All right, so this might take a second. I'm guessing it's a fairly heavy library. Hello, hello, Weeb Course. Welcome, welcome. Hmm, my dad just called me. Let's see what is up. All right, so we are done with that, and let's go ahead and install pandas while we're at it. Let's see, yes. Uh, let's see, conda, ipy, kernel, we need to install that as well. Conda ins. IPI kernel. What's up, Pratyush? Welcome, welcome. I'm doing well. How are you doing? Let's see, so we're installing that as well. And then let us see. I think uh, TIKA was the last thing I need to do. Conda TIKA. Conda install source from Conda Forge, okay. So I have a question for you guys. Um, so Tina Huang, who's like another uh, data science, data analyst, um, YouTuber, is doing a session where she's gaming uh, and she's doing Pokemon Sh a Brilliant Diamond. I, I think it's Brilliant Diamond or is it Shining? Maybe uh, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl. I'm curious, if I was to play a game, what would be interesting for y'all to see me play? Yep, on a Friday night. That's great to hear, Pratyush. Great to hear, great to hear. The Jersey dude, good to see you. I don't think I've seen you in a while. All right, so I think we have everything we need now. So I can probably... Is this... All right, so let's go ahead and select a curl. Uh, let's see, I have to refresh this, right? So let's exit... What kind of games do you like? Um, I play a lot of Civilization, or I don't play that many games in general, but Civilization 4, I play that. I play Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is really good. 
Um, I've been playing Ace Attorney Chronicles recently. Uh, so I used to grow up playing Ace Attorney, and I didn't know that they made another game in 2015. Um, they're all the exact same game, just with slightly different stories. Call of Duty is always solid, yeah. I haven't played Call of Duty in a while. Sweet. Great to hear that, Mohammed. Grand Theft Auto. A GTA is a fun game. It is a fun game. There we go. NLP. So import pandas as pd. pd.read or pd.data frame. And then let's say data. Um, Cool, okay, so it looks like it works, perfect. So we created a new environment and we installed the required variable or the required um, thingies. Um, the required uh, modules. Ooh, sklearn, okay, so I didn't download sklearn, I forgot about that. Ooh, Elden Ring, I've heard great things about it. I really want to, to play that. Uh, install Conda using Anaconda. Da, 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 da. Okay. Conda create, SKLearn. Conda forge, SK, scikit-learn. Okay. Oh, cool. Someone uh, subscribed. Easy visit, just subscribe. Nice. I like the little T-Rex. Cute. Conda. Uh, let's see. Install... Scikit learn. Uh, yes, let's go. Valorant, nice, nice. I'm not a big, I'm not like into like kind of like the, the gaming type of games, you know, but um, they're fun to watch. It's fun to watch people like, because they're quite good at them, so. Okay, cool. So now we have Scikit learn as well. So let's go ahead and import all the libraries that they mentioned over here and see how we can construct this, this bot. So I'm gonna copy the code and see if I can like understand what's going on. No module named Spacey Gold. Uh, interesting. So I just thought that installing Spacey would give me that. Oh, whoops, that is my Gmail. Oh, okay. Mm, let's see, so what is spacey.gold? Civ 6, yep, yep. I play Civ 4 more, but Civ 6 is a great game. Interesting. Okay, so where is what is this spacey dot gold thing? Uh previously available spacey dot gold dot by luo tags. So, maybe gold got deprecated? So I guess what we really need is we need something called gold parse. Ah, uh, training pipelines and models, control F, B, okay. As of 3.0, the example object replaces the gold parse class. It can be constructed in a very similar way from a doc and a dictionary of annotations. Okay. So it looks like this is no longer in use. They switched that out for something else. Hey, raw vlogs. Great to hear from you. Great to hear from you. So we want to... Okay, so this gold parse thing is not uh, used anymore. So it looks like we need to switch it out for something else. I guess I could have downloaded an older version of Spacey, but you know, working through these working through these problems is this is what the real like data science process is like. You got to work through problems like this, deprecated modules, codes, uh, code changing. Uh, let's see. 
So I guess when do we use this gold parse thing? Oh, interesting. Oh, it doesn't get used anywhere over here. Okay, so I guess I could just ignore it for now. Cool, Dammy, Dammy Boy, Dammy Boy, 97 just subscribed. Nice, I like this little uh, subscriber bot. That's fun, that's fun. Okay, so we're gonna ignore that for now. Let's go ahead and try this. Okay, cool, so that was easy to import. And then here, it looks like it's just a function that they're calling. Where basically, okay, we create an empty list for training data, lines, and then we open up the JSON and then read lines. Oh, okay, cool. So let's go ahead and just try this ourselves, like as a separate, in a separate cell. So I'm gonna put that over there. And then with open JSON file path. Okay, so let's define the JSON file path. Uh, and I want to read in this file. So copy relative path. Uh, input, oh yeah, I forgot this is uh, Windows, right? So I do most of my coding on a Mac where we use forward slashes. Let's try that. Okay, cool, cool. So I think training data. So there's nothing in there. Okay, so lines got imported, okay. I have a question, how do you approach for a job at a company who is a long forgotten classmate? So I'm guessing like, how do you ask someone like a, long, a classmate yet a while ago for a job? Um, I always just like go onto LinkedIn and be like, hey dude, how are you? Uh, hope everything's going really well. I'm applying for a job over here. Uh, let me know if you have any time to catch up and then um, see if like, this would be a good fit. I find just being direct with people is more than okay. Like I don't think I've ever met anyone who like won't give um, a recommendation. So, you know, lines. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the first line. And then dot get, so we're looking at a Python dictionary over here. So we can get, oh, did I? Oh, no, it's, oh, it's not a dictionary. It's a, oh, it's a string, interesting. Huh. Why would it be stored as a, like a string instead of a dictionary? That's odd. Is it stored like that in the, Yeah, I don't know why it would open it like that. It's not It's not opening like a dictionary. So you guys will see over here, or maybe is, it, maybe, is that just how dictionaries are displayed in? I don't know. Well, okay, it looks like we did import it. I don't know if training, is there supposed to be something in here? Oh, I completely forgot about, oh, I, oh, I forgot about all of this, okay. Networking inside a company, if you're in person, just buy people coffee um, and talk to them. Uh, otherwise, uh, it's all about just being a cool person that, you know, or like, you know, it's like being a chill person um, that people want to hang out with. That's really all it, it's about. Make sure that people around the company know what you're up to. Uh, that's usually how I ended up networking, so... Okay, so let's try training data again. Let's look at the first index. Cool. It looks like it imported it correctly, nice. I wonder what this entities thing is. Yeah, no problem at all. Okay, so for anyone that is just joining us, what we're doing over here is this is a video sponsored by projectpro.com. It's a pretty cool website that, um, at least I'm not aware of another project, I mean, another product that's quite like it. Basically what they do is they will solve data science projects end to end, right? So like forecasting projects, uh, natural language processing projects, which is what we're working on right now, um, visualization projects, they'll solve them end to end. And then have all the code and videos explaining their code. So like there's videos over here uh, that will show, you know, how they actually solved it. And um, there's a link in the description below if you want to go check it out. 
But uh, I, I mean, I think it's pretty cool. I'm not aware of another website with just projects like this. So right now what we're doing is we're building a uh, natural language processing bot that can read resumes and parse out important information from said resumes. Do you think it would be, do you think it would be sweet to be a data scientist in the crypto industry? I think I'm the wrong person to ask about crypto, um, only because I don't, uh, I don't really think, think all that much about crypto, um, but I don't know that much about it uh, as well either. I guess I don't, I just don't understand what problems in society crypto really solves, quite honestly. Um, like people will talk about like security and everything, right? But it's not like banks are insecure, to be honest. Like, here's the thing at least in the US, right? Even if uh, my bank gets hacked into, right, and all my money gets stolen, um, the federal government, like, insures that for me. Like, they'll make sure I get my money back. Um, so I, I guess, for me, the thing about crypto is, I guess I don't really understand what problems it's really solving, right? And then you have, like, things like gas fees and stuff with the, the Ethereum network where transferring money takes a bunch of money. So um, I'm curious to see if anyone could explain to me kind of, like, what direction is crypto going in? to be more acceptable in the mainstream than it is currently. But what would you like to do in crypto? Like, what, what do you see yourself doing in crypto? I personally don't know much about it. Work from home at the moment. We use Slack and the same Zoom calls, but I'll definitely have that in mind. Thank you. And I mean, I would honestly just email people and set up like, you know, just coffee dates with them and be like, hey, dude, like, I just want to meet some more people at the company. Uh, do you have 30 minutes just like, you know, hang out, um, you know, and something like that. Is there any way I can connect with you? Um, yeah, uh, my I respond to some messages on the Instagram and LinkedIn and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I can blow your mind. Cool. Yeah, no, that sounds, that sounds interesting. Um, I would be curious to see what, 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 um, is happening in the crypto industry that actually solves like real life problems. No problem. No problem. Um, again, I, I love the interaction. So thank you so much for, you know, saying stuff. Uh, let's see. So training data. Okay. So we have our training data over here. So basically what we're doing over here is we're reading in the JSON file and, putting everything inside a list that can be easily parsed out, I guess. Cool, so that was easy enough. So I'm not too worried about that. What What is the next thing that we would be looking at? So train model. So how does a model get trained? So we're building a model over here. Okay, I guess it's not too much code. So let's just go ahead and copy this and then we'll break it out part by part. So we've imported, we've inputted our data. Now we need to train our model. Okay, so we're not going to run this like a function. So you need to input train and you need to input model. So train is the training data. And then, oh, okay, you can also put in a pre-made model if you want, okay. So I don't need that right now. So let's get rid of that. And let's first see if our, if we have any problems with our imports. Okay, cool, we don't. So actually, yeah, let's go ahead and put our imports on a different line. So, and if you guys have any questions as to what I'm doing right now, feel free to ask in the, in the chat box. It's, um, it, it'll be good practice for me to, you know, figure it out as well. So if model is not none, so if model is not none, so if there is a model basically, okay, okay. NLP, interesting, just because of the whole not none thing, I, I, probably, I probably would have reversed my if statements. Um, and been like, if model is none, then do these two else, do these two. NLP equals spacey.load model, print load model model, else spacey.blank English. Okay, so we're creating a blank language class. Okay, interesting. So we don't have to worry about this because we don't have a model object quite yet. So we're creating a blank, we're creating a blank model over here or blank language class object. Then we have to bring in our training data, which will be, whoops. That'll be this list over here, I'm guessing. If any are not in 
nlp.pipe names. NER equals nlp.createPipe NER. So what did NER stand for again? NER stood for, I forgot. Oh, wow. Oh, these are really detailed. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, yeah, it's a cool product. It seems very thorough. Uh, Jim Baker, I'll get to you in a second. Uh, give me one second. N-L-P-N-E-R. Named entity recognition. Okay. So, yeah, um, Jim uh, Baker, the hashes stand for uh, comments. So, whatever is here uh, won't get run as code. They're just comments, basically. And you can comment out any line of code by hitting control, um, control forward slash. And then undo it by doing the same thing. If you want to learn how to code, I do have a Python tutorial in my YouTube channel. Just go to my YouTube channel and type in Python. And it's like three hours long. And once you finish that, then you will have the knowledge necessary to do stuff like this. Obviously, you'll need to practice to actually be able to do stuff like this. But uh, you'll have the knowledge to do stuff like this. Okay, so named uh, entity recognition not in NLP.pipe names. Okay, so it creates that. And then for blank annotate blank and annotations in train data, ner.add label, other pipes. Okay, looks like we don't need this, so we'll get rid of that just to clean it up a little bit. What's the name of the editor using? It's called Visual Studio Code. Um, it's probably the most popular editor today. Uh, Microsoft created it, and it's just, it's a tremendous product. Um, there's, it, it's not to be confused with Visual Studio, which is a much more full-fledged IDE. Uh, this is a lot lighter, um, and it's really all that, you know, people like me need. Okay, cool. So let, let's run this and see what happens. It's going to break. I knew it. <laughs> Expected an indented block after the for statement on line 24. Uh, which for statement? Oh, okay. I think this one over here. So I probably copied it incorrectly. So let's go to train model uh, under the width. So there needs to be a width, an if, a for, and then an, a for, oh, did I miss something? Uh, the grid, what did you use before Visual Studio Code? So for, then there's another for underneath it. Ah, this is, wait, oh, this is double indented. Why did, why did they double indent this? Yeah, you can use Visual Studio with Java as well. Line 24, okay, so what we need to do is we need to add, show some, there we go. Now I can actually tell where I am. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay, so we got another error, but this is a different one. That's how you know you're making progress, when you get a different error. I was using Jupyter Notebooks and Atom. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I've heard Atom got a little bit bloated. Uh, like it started off really good, then got bloated, but I've never used it before, so I'm not uh, sure. I've just heard that before. So I created a blank English model. NLP add pipe now takes the string name of the register component factory, not a callable component. Expected a string, but got, okay. Okay, okay, so it needs a string. So it looks like the code works on older data or older versions. You know what, one second, let me. go over here, I noticed you know what, let me do this. Let me just go ahead and download the version of Spacey that they're expecting. That way I don't keep running into these problems of just like basic compatibility issues. Uh, let's see. Conda remove
Dude, thank you so much, X. I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. I had fun making it. I need to, I need, you know what? I need to spend money on just getting better lighting for myself though. Um, I don't have an excuse not to do that anymore. I mean, your boy has got sponsors now. That PC sure is ramping up. By the way, you got the new Mac. Not yet. I am so cheap. I'm not willing to spend the money for a Mac even though like I have the money for it. Uh, I'm thinking about getting it for myself after I hit 100,000 subscribers. So maybe after I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'll go get it for myself. Yeah, this PC, yeah, this thing, yeah, it, it, it yeah, it, anything, you know, you, if you sneeze at it the wrong way, then the uh, fans ramp up. Silly Billy, welcome, welcome. Okay, so I think we removed Spacey. Now let's go ahead and install it again. And then ha let me just make sure, let's see. Conda in doll specific which is the new mac uh the one that i want is oh the iphone 13 pro so uh to show you guys like how like out of touch i've become with like cell phones and stuff i used to be a big nerd about like iphones and everything um i used to th i was um convinced that the phone I have is an iPhone 13 Pro. It turns out it's a 12 Pro. And I didn't notice it until I went to the Apple store and I noticed that the um, notch is significantly smaller on the 13 Pro. So the Mac that I would want is one of these uh, Pro models over here, but they're definitely overkill for, over for what I do. Information theory by art of the problem. Let's see. Information theory, art of the problem. Oh, this one over here? Huh, interesting. Oh, th I'm guessing it's this one over here. The best PC for data analytics? Um, honestly, they're all fine. Like, they, there's nothing really... I, I, I would say that, like, unless you're doing tons of stuff on uh, in relation to... Um, that need like GPUs and stuff, then like Macs and PCs are all basically the same. If you need to use a bunch of GPUs, then obviously you have to get a PC because you need the CUDA cores. Um, unboxing video for sure. Oh, interesting. That's pretty cool, Jim Baker. Uh, Conda install package equals verse. Okay, that's what I thought, yeah. Equals and then they asked me to install 2.2.3. Oh, whoops. That was not what I wanted. So for anyone wondering what we're doing, basically I was using a, a, a more current version of Spacey than um, what this project was built on. And because of that, I'm running into a bunch of compatibility issues. So I'm just rolling back to the version of Spacey that they were using. Went over Markov chains, nice, nice, cool stuff. So what are you guys up to this uh, weekend? What are you guys doing right now? What's, what, what's everyone's plans for the weekend? What is everyone's plans for the weekend? I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Any best resource to start with NLP, ML, DL? I mean, well, the stuff we're doing right now is pretty cool, but I know um, I took the TensorFlow course on Coursera, and I found that very insightful and helpful for doing the, um, what do you call it, for learning NLP. But what is everyone up to this weekend while we wait for this to solve itself? Collecting sports cards, cool. Any specific, um, any specific uh, sport? Uh, Raw meal, this is the first time I'm watching this section kind of series by Sean, so I'm sure it's gonna be nice things unrelated to coding he's doing. Uh, well, I mean, feel free to like just leave it in the section. You know, sometimes I answer stuff. UFC 273, work. Oh man, why are you, why are you working? Spearfishing, that's cool. Oh, that, is, that sounds like so much fun. 
Playing to catch up on the stats course, I took a Udemy, working on some GIS. Man, y'all do a lot of work. Trying to close a deal for a 1995 Tops Jackie Robinson back at grade four. Uh, is grade four the best you can do? Um, like, is, is grade four the highest uh, grade, or is there like a grade five or something? I'm trying to get a freaking Pandas data frame to load into Teradata table or load. <laughs> oh man, I feel you. I, I gave up on that. I just directly loaded using dBeaver and um, loaded through CSVs, but I feel you. Yeah, yeah, Teradata, is, Teradata kills my soul as well. Studying neural networks, nice. Oh, interesting. Maybe the Conda Fords thing here is. Let's try this again. Oh, 10 is highest. Okay, okay. Alex, studying neural networks, beautifying GitHub page. Nice, nice, good stuff. Beautiful GitHub pages are amazing. What are some solid data analytics exits? Uh, exits meaning any good project ideas, please suggest three to four to work on and showcase in your portfolio. Um, I always tell people like your project should be something that you're interested in. Um, so I don't usually give suggestions for people to, for products that people do. Since when have you started this data line? Um, Meaning like how long have I been in the industry? I've been in the industry for like three to four years now. So my rest days are Tuesday, Wednesday. Ah, okay, 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 okay. The card grades are one through 10, 10 being gem mint highest. Okay, and ba basically nothing gets a 10 is my understanding, right? Man, why is this taking so long? Trying to get cards from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, grade 8, 9, or 10 is nearly impossible. Makes sense, yeah. Working on managing a group project for my web programming class. Interesting. I didn't know you were doing web programming. That's awesome. Oh, let's see. We want to... You know what? Maybe I should use just use pip. Do you use any analytics to manage your personal finances? Nothing hardcore. Um, usually what I do is I just put stuff, like I, just, I organize everything very well into like Excel spreadsheets and stuff. So I keep a very strict tab on my high level finances with Excel. So I don't look at my individual like spending and everything. Oh, wait. Oh, it didn't work, damn it. Um, let's try PIP. Oh. oh, man. That was so much easier. Wow. I should have just used PIP. Uh, let's see. Luckily, I only work eight hours, so I would like to continue studying Japanese. I plan to take the JLPT. Nice. Well, best of luck to you. Are you, are, are you planning on getting a job in Japan? I'm trying to learn to code to help my stock market analysis. I turned 15,000 to 280,000 using regular technical analysis combined with Elliott Wave Theory. Nice, good stuff. That's awesome, Jim Baker. What are some of your financial goals? Oh, cool, oh, wait, did it, did it work or? It looks like it didn't work. Let's see what we have here. You know what? Let's do it this way. I've been living in Japan for two decades. Wow, nice. 
Cybersecurity is an amazing career. It yeah, it, it's a great career these days. Construct uh, from requirements.txt. I have not had to do this in forever. Uh, conda install for requirements at txt. There we go. Oh, interesting. Shannon Tobin just subscribed. Nice. You can run conda install file requirements.txt instead of the loop, but there's no target directory in uh, conda install. Conda install. Interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it this way then. Let us go ahead and save this. It's a text document. We'll put it over here, Project Pro live stream. And then we will Where are we? Mm. Huh. And CD YouTube. Can I find the path specified? Okay, so let's take a quick look at this. Yeah, I do have a folder called YouTube in my documents folder. Whoops, not like that. CD YouTube, cannot find this path specified, L let's see, Windows LS. Do you save your live streams here? I do, I do. Do I intend to make any interviews about PG courses in some future video? That's a good idea. I could probably do that, do an interview on a PG course. DIR, okay, so it's DIR in Windows. So it's LS and Mac, DIR in Windows. Whoops. Huh. Interesting. Oh, odd, okay. So I'm not exactly sure where this folder even is in that case. Oh, okay, okay, okay. CD, OneDrive, CD. Yeah, so OneDrive does all kinds of weird stuff to your file system. CD, YouTube, CD, Project, Pro, Live Stream, is that what it was called? Project Pro live stream. Oh, uh, okay. So here it is, and then I have my requirements.txt right over there. So they're saying over here, conda install file requirements.txt. I can do that, okay. So conda file requirements. Require txt. Oh, did I? I didn't do install though, right? Yeah, I need to do install. 
So conda install file requirements.txt. Let's see what this does for us. Try using tab autocomplete directory file. Oh, yeah, you know what, Jonathan, you're 100% right. I, de I definitely should do that. Okay. From the current channels. Okay, wait, so the scikit-learn one is not available, but I already have that, so I'm not worried about that. So let's just, let's just get rid of that entire requirement.txt. So for anyone wondering why this is taking so long, um, this is honestly like a, it's a problem I hear like even like really experienced data scientists have of like just getting your environment set up half the time is like such a pain. Um, let's try this. OMG, I work on Windows at work and OneDrive combined with VS Code's workspace I get so lost in my file. Yeah, dude, OneDrive, it, it's so bad. Oh my God, it, it messes up my file structure so badly. And then like, Oh, uh, if it, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Uh, have you experienced burnout? Kevin Ari Narayana, great to see you, great to see you too. Um, and I'm also glad we have some people making friends over here. Humans haven't discovered this yet, but some nuclei are really heavy element isotopes, give off strong signature to their strong nuclear force. Interesting. Um, Shashank, have you experienced burnout? Quite a bit, yes, yes. Um, but I am working to manage it right now. I'm letting go of my consulting practice because y'all have made YouTube lucrative enough to where I can like do this instead of my consulting. So thank you guys so much for all of the help. But our sun doesn't produce stable types of these heavy elements, so we don't find them on Earth, Earth unfortunately. Interesting. Hopefully, eventually, this, env this environment figures itself out. So it, it, it's it kind of it kind of sad, but it, we probably won't even get off the ground with uh, our environment by the time I have to clock out for the night. But thank you so much for the uh, suggestion, Jonathan. Too. Yeah, I should just I should be doing tab complete. Of course, of course. So, is anyone reading any? Are people reading any interesting books right now? Currently, I'm reading uh, the Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. Um, great book. Also, these Kindles are really, really good. They're they're kind of expensive, um, but I really like it. It's so light and easy to carry around. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, conda create env name NLP. We'll call it better NLP. Where was that conda cheat sheet? Conda create op oh, name. Whenever my environments don't work, I just crash it and you know start a new one up. Currently reading Sapiens. Nice. Sapiens is a great book. Conda activate better NLP. All right. And then now I should be able to do this. Uh, that book's on my list, but you should check out one of his videos uh, on changing empires. Which one is that? Uh, there's one on the economic machine. It, it, the, the video you're talking about is uh, the one that's based on, that this book is based off of, right? Or the other way around. It's how space travel for light years distance can be accomplished. Nice. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, thank God. Okay. This is so much easier. I really should just start it off doing it this way. Ray Dalio also posts a great YouTube videos about the changing world order. Yep, yep, I, I love his videos. They're really, really interesting. He, being someone like him is kind of the dream to me. Like he's a hedge fund manager. 
uh, which is his main job, right? But he, like, does this on the side for fun. Um, he says it's part of, like, his whole, like, investment strategy and stuff, which maybe it is. I don't know. But I, I would assume that a lot of it really is just for fun, which sounds awesome. I'm reading Unix for Dummies. I wish I could afford uh, AC Kindle, though. Dude, once you join uh, the data analytics space, maybe you can buy one. Um, trying my hand in statistical rethinking, but currently lost in... Well, I currently lost. That's funny. Okay, cool. So it looks like... We got it to work. Um, SK learn was so conda install SK learn or scikit learn. That's the only thing we didn't that it didn't install. Sweet. So we got uh, people collecting tops baseball cards this weekend. Uh, we got people learning all kinds of stuff. We got people reading all kinds of interesting books. I, 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 that's what I love about YouTube. You get to meet just all kinds of awesome people doing crazy stuff. It's fun to see. Okay, cool. So now we should be able to run the code without running into so many issues. I'm just going to do that from next next time onwards. Just use their version of requirements.txt. We know gravity bends stay a space time to some degree, but it takes so much mass to even a little. Interesting. That's interesting, Jim Baker. Okay, so let us do that. And then let's switch this to better NLP. And run this and see what happens. Oh, wait, I need to install IPyKernel. IPyKernel. Yes. All right, let us install this. Okay, cool. So now I should be able to run this. Okay, perfect. That worked now. Awesome. Awesome. We will not have to rewrite a bunch of code anymore. Perfect. So I guess let me go ahead and run this engine.py and see what this does. So I'm going to control A, control C this. Uh, So this needs to save from SRC because we need to go down the SRC file. There we go. And I should just be able to run this. No module named ML pipeline. Okay. Odd. How far away your culture is from the equator and how spicy their foods are. Interesting. So if you can magnify a strong, it'll bend space time. That means we can time travel. Yeah, that's what I would get out of that too. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take this NLP thing and put it inside the SRC folder. Uh, let's see. We're gonna use better NLP, space travel. Okay, unable to process. Ah, data, uh, entity recognition in resumes.json. Okay, so with, where is that file? Okay. So let's just go ahead and take that and just dump it into this SRC file. All right, so we are now going to just run it like this, remove all of that. Cool, interesting. So I think it did it. Uh, test is not defined, oh, whoops.
Interstellar was an amazing movie, yeah. Matthew McConaughey killed in that movie. Okay, bend it enough to tell uh, to transport spicy button curry from India to Japan now. Nice, nice. Uh, okay. I think we trained it. Now the only problem is I'm not exactly seeing what the end result is. Let's try this one more time. Model exists, updating the model. Loaded model, NLP model, starting iteration zero, starting iteration one. Oh, okay. Oh, whoops. Did not mean to do that. Don't need that. Don't need that. So I ran all this code. Ah, oh, okay, okay. My Oh, my predictions got output to... Okay, that way. Yeah, that's a non-existent directory for me. We will create a directory called output over here. That explains it. Hmm, but it didn't actually output anything. How much longer do you plan on being live, Shashank? Uh, I think maybe like 30 more minutes about. Yeah, 30 more minutes, then we'll call it. So I didn't get much sleep this week, so I do need to... I was working on a couple of projects for uh, my company, and then obviously putting out that video yesterday, uh, or today. Was it today? Today, but I, uh, because I have to get the video approved by sponsors, it has to be like ready at least two days in advance. Um, so I had the... I got the video ready like two days in advance, but... Just put it out yesterday or today. Also, guys, I am uh, currently watching Narcos Mexico. I'm binging it. Cannot stop watching it. So good. How do you see the future of quantum programming? Q sharp. Q sharp. I've never heard of Q sharp. Will it be an ordinary thing? I'm not exactly sure. My my understanding of quantum program or quantum computers is that they solve certain problems like the average person won't really have much of a use for it they'll just they'll still continue to use regular computers but there are certain like edge cases that quantum computers are particularly good at taking care of luis alvaro go ahead and check out my data analyst roadmap video that's probably a good place to get yourself oriented in this uh, field of data science yeah narcos is great maybe doing it like that maybe it's a problem Huh. Why do people hate Swift? The learning modules there are so fun. Well, Swift is great. I think the only problem is that it's it, it's not used for anything except for iOS, like programming iOS applications. What are you drinking? Uh, water today. Water and uh, boba tea. I might go out with some uh, friends after this live stream, but we'll see. I'm kind of I'm kind of exhausted. Have you dove into the data engineering field? No, but I do very light data engineering in my day job. Like all I well, I wouldn't say all data analysts. Actually, a lot of them can get away with having no data engineering skills. But if you want to get anything done, you're gonna have to get some data engineering skills because you're gonna want data in databases faster than the data engineers can put it in there. So. Okay, so this doesn't seem to be working. So let's restart this, exit, and then open it up again. Dude, better. I loved Breaking Bad. I need to watch Better Call Saul. I've been watching a ton of um, scenes of it on YouTube. Okay. Let us try this one more time. So nothing is coming in the output folder over here. So I'm trying to figure out what the problem could be so let me go see what this predict model predict oh 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 
I didn't give it anything to predict out of. Okay. That makes sense. So what did this originally say? Resume parser output. Oh, so can it read? Okay, let's try this. Okay, let's try this. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, so it's reading, um, it's reading, unable to start Tika server. Okay, so that might be a problem. But that's pretty cool. So it was actually reading reading the PDF, right? So it saw the PDF and it was able to like read it. Uh, Breaking Bad is a much watched series too. Might be the uh, yeah, Breaking Bad being the greatest show in TV history. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that like it ended well too. Like Game of Thrones was on its way to potentially being one of the greatest shows in history. But it shows you just how important sticking the landing is. Like, if you mess up the landing so badly, you can, like, ruin a decade's worth of effort to where no one cares about it anymore. I could not stand the last two seasons of Game of Thrones. I couldn't stand the last season of Game of Thrones. The second to last season, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe they'll make it up in the ending. They're setting stuff up. But, like, I could not stand the last season of Game of Thrones. And I was so upset because it was, like, a decade's worth of waiting just, like, out the, out the window. I really appreciate your hustle. I know it takes a lot to do what you do on top of the full-time job. No, thank you guys so much for, uh, you know, uh, again, we have 40 people watching me code on a Friday night. It, it's awesome. This is uh, always great to, I, I love talking to y'all and hanging out with y'all. So it's a lot of fun. Okay, so we got an error. Unable to run Java. Is it install? Oh, are you serious? <laughs> Failed to receive startup confirmation from start server. Uh, I don't have... Story wise, I liked the first two seasons. After that, I can see what you're saying. I don't know if I would call the first two seasons childish though, but I can see what you're saying like past that. Okay, install Java Windows. That's the problem with using all these external libraries and stuff. Download and install. Uh, Windows online. Windows offline. I have 64-bit Windows. So I'll just install the offline file. That way they don't download a bunch of random stuff. I heard the Game of Thrones is only good with the first few seasons. The rest of them are not as good as the first few seasons. That's accurate. The first few seasons are really good. Uh, and then it gets... The problem is the ending is so bad. It's it's not worth watching the series purely because the ending is that bad. Um, politically incorrect and Mets baseball. Nice. All right. So let us install this. So... This is this is the a real day in the life of a data scientist. You will spend so much time just configuring your computer to work with all the different libraries that you need to use. All right, I need to stand up. So I'm super uh, lucky. I, I uh, bought a uh, standing desk. Amazing purchase. So useful. Just so I can like get off my butt. There we go. Okay, so we installed Java now. So let's restart this. But if anyone's wondering like, oh, when are you gonna actually start coding and stuff? Well, yeah, this is the real life, day in the life of a data analyst or a data scientist, lots of computer configuration. All right, let's try this again. Red Wedding was the worst, interesting. I lo yeah, I love Ron Stark. Sopranos, Breaking Bad, yeah. I wonder why shows about criminals are like, people like them so much. I have not watched The Sopranos though, I need to. Come on, work, fingers crossed. Oh, okay. Uh, 
allow access. Okay, so it, it popped up something asking for... Ooh, okay, okay. Processing resume one. Oh, that's so cool. It got the person's name, location. That is so cool. I think it's done now, right? Yeah, it's done. So, guys, what it did was... It took this resume over here, figured out what the person's name was, their location, designation, software engineer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. That is so cool. Okay, 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 okay. Now I have to try it on my own resume. Okay. I have to try this on my own resume now. That was super cool. I did not think it would actually work that well. So we have a resume uh, reader now. That is super cool. So let me go ahead and pull up one of my resumes. I'll pull up an old one. I don't know why, but I don't like showing my current resume on uh, YouTube. But I don't know why. Let me see. Ah, okay, I'll, I'll pull up the first resume I ever used to get a real job. Couldn't you do that on Microsoft Outlook? It pulls information from different fields. So my question to you, Jim Baker, is would it be able to read something like Wait, let me open up. So would it be able to take, huh? So would it be able to take something like this, like that's written like this and then parse it that out like that? Like can Microsoft Outlook do that? And when it does that, it probably is using a model similar to the one that was built over here. Now use it when Outlook gives you that 15 minute warning. <laughs> okay, so, oh shoot, my phone number's here. I gotta, I gotta make sure I get rid of that. So the point of this is that you can put in a resume and it'll read the resume for you. Like tell you what, what's all the relevant information inside the resume. Nothing in here that's too private, right? Uh, yeah, it looks fine. Okay. Ooh, someone subscribed. Jacob. Ulrich, subscribed. Awesome. Thanks for joining, Jacob. Shonk old resume. Okay, so I just put my old resume in there. Let's uh, remove these for now, and then let's see if it can read my old resume. No, I uh, majored in chemistry, actually. So it's processing my old resume right now. Oh, uh, okay, so I guess it finished processing. Okay, so I guess it couldn't read my resume. Maybe it's because my resume is formatted very differently. Uh, hmm. Seems like a pair fairly standard format though. Yes, this is exactly what, what companies use uh, whenever they you send in your job application. So usually uh, it goes through an ATS, an applicant tracking system, and from there it'll um, – then only you'll ever – will the recruiting manager ever see it. Okay, interesting. I wonder why that did not work.
maybe. Yeah, see, these aren't extremely well formatted resumes. So I'm guessing why like mine was not being read uh, that well. Hmm. Of course, ACCO, ACCO, based Abdu Dial. What does that mean? Okay, sample. Maybe mine's just not supposed to work. Maybe mine just doesn't work. So let us download someone's sample resume. Uh, okay, view text format. I just want to download this as a PDF. Sample resume PDF. Oh, cool. This is perfect. All right, let's put it in here and see if it works. Hmm. So got Alice Clark. Oh yeah. <laughs> so it read it. It just got the information wrong. So functional resume is what it thought the name. Oh, well maybe the name was, I forgot if there was a name on it. Nope. John W. Smith is the name. Okay. So as you guys can see, obviously it doesn't work 100% of the time. We probably could tune it to work a little bit better. Maybe the field to you. Yeah, that, that's possible. That, that's possible. Still, it's pretty cool. It seemed to basically recognize it, but I think we could program a better one. All right, guys. Well, any questions that you guys might have? I think that's, uh, that's about it for today. I'm beat, but that was super cool. So for anyone wondering um, what we were doing this whole time, we were basically creating a natural language processing bot to automatically read resumes based on the information or based on this project from projectpro.io um, who have, this is the second video they've sponsored. So they've been, you know, an amazing, very supportive sponsor. But basically anyone that's interested in projectpro.io, they uh, have dozens, if not a thousand uh, projects. And I think a couple of free projects as well on all kinds of different data science things. So like, you know, building an AWS ETL data pipeline in Python from YouTube, from YouTube data, NLP projects, uh, identifying project product bundles using R, um, Spark projects, chatbots. So if you're ever looking for in, like inspiration and stuff, I have a link in the description below that you can check out. I'm also going to pin a comment um, after this video is done where you can check those out as well. But uh, yeah, they've been an amazing sponsor and uh, it's, it was a super cool project that we just did. So good stuff. Oscar Isaac to program is like we did an AI and X Machina. <laughs> nice. All right, guys, so I'm going to head out. I hope you guys have a great Friday night, and I'll see you guys later.